Hi YouTube. So I have not made a video for a really long time and um, I, <laughs> I got this for a backdrop um, which is my solution to not being able to put anything in the walls in this apartment so it looks sort of alright. Um, I hope you can hear me over the air conditioner. I basically just thought I was watching one of Kyla's videos and I remembered that she's so good about posting videos even when she feels crappy or there's a lot going on or anything like that. And so I thought that I would talk to you guys a little bit. I don't really have a topic in mind. I had actually, no, that's not true. I had about eight topics that were running through my head when I was planning to do this video. I just went for a huge shopping spree on fantasy novels and um, I thought I could review them, which I might do in another video. Um, but instead I thought that I would talk about meditation. I have this thing on my head. Um, I didn't really like my hair today, but there's also <laughs> a ritualistic reason you might cover your head. Um, there was this guy in India that I used to meditate with and he had a whole ritual associated with meditation that um, he would cover his head and face the sun, especially if it was a morning meditation, but I think that applies to evening also. And covering your head is sort of like symbolic of humility, I guess. Um, I have an interesting perspective on ritual associated with mysticism and spirituality. My definition of spirituality and mysticism, especially in contrast to religion, is that it is not so much about rules as about recommendations. So like for instance, um, a lot of people meditate with a mala, which is traditionally supposed to have 108 beads. Um, and then my same friend who used to meditate um, discovered that his mala was short on bead and then he didn't want to meditate anymore because he thought that the benefit would be cancelled out by the missing bead. Which I strongly disagree with. I think that um, meditation is so hard to do because of the current, this sort of natural current of your mind is to always go out toward sensory objects and interact with them, um, making meditation very difficult because the direction of meditation is inward. So I kind of think if you, if you keep setting up hurdles for yourself, you're never going to do it. I have so many friends who believe in the benefit of meditation but don't think they have the time to do it. Um, which is kind of poppycock, I think, because if you have time to use the toilet, you have time to meditate. Like you can, and I realized like in traditional Hinduism, you would never do some kind of spiritual or religious thing in the toilet. But the fact is, is that the toilet is the one place in any building where nobody questions what you're doing. Unless you're one of these businessmen who typically has a telephone conference while on the job, but um, I think that those kinds of people are maybe a little bit rare. But you know, I know that there's a lot of people who catch up on email or answer emails while they're in there. So we're not addressing those people, but generally speaking, I think that human beings have a lot more time than they think they do, and. Uh, and I have no compunction about if I feel like I have to meditate, I will have a fake uh, bathroom emergency and just go do it for like 30 seconds or a minute. And um, I don't feel like I'm angering the gods by doing that. I think that the gods are always pleased by people who meditate and Meditation in particular is not really about pleasing the gods anyway, but you know, if you choose to approach it that way, 
as a means of interacting with a deity, then um, I don't think they're bothered about what particular method you use, you know, as long as you're not being deliberately disrespectful. Anyway, um, so yeah, so basically my approach to mysticism and spirituality is that I think all those rules are really just about increasing the benefit. It's not that, it's not like this dramatic Hollywood movie where you're either doomed or you're saved and those are your only two options. I think that you're kind of building from a state of, a default state of kind of um, like worst case scenario, everything's just normal and not so not so exciting, but you're still fine. But if you kind of follow the rules, like for instance, if you cover your head and face the sun before you meditate, you know, you can call it a psychosomatic benefit, but maybe your meditation is more concentrated as opposed to if you just kind of roll out of bed and splash some water over your face and do it. So I think all of those rules, whether you're using a mala or you're chanting beforehand or you have a special incense that you like it's all really just about making it you know marginally easier to do and um, and slightly more concentrated perhaps and sometimes you can use stuff to trick your mind if you're if your mind believes that the, you know the meditation you're about to do is really really special then maybe it'll also somehow have a little bit more faith in the process and then it also ends up being more beneficial. Um, but today I'm just wearing this because I didn't like my hair and um, this is a silk scarf from the Bon Monastery in India which is uh, the old Tibetan religion. And. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say for now. I would like to review the book soon, but I feel like I'm sort of trailing off here. <laughs> so I haven't done a video in a while, so maybe I'll get more into it and I'll have more to say. Anyway, um, that's it. Bye for now.